Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how I can create these train carriages. So when we drive the train, the carriages are driving as well. And you are also able to undock them so that they slowly will stand. Great, so let's go. So first of all we start up with our train here. Let's open this up and I optimize some functions so the move along is still the same but we go to the event graph here and I optimize the tick event here so we have usually the retriggerable delay here you can just delete it so it's not necessary because of the tick event and also we have our wheel rotation animation so this is much easier to do it this way because now you can add up some wheels and just connect it with the target here Let's go to the viewport because we need two more things here. The first thing is we select the train mesh, add component and add an box collision and let's call this train. Looks strange but the reason for this is that we can place this box collision here in front of the train and this will be the prevo point of our train so that we can move the train like we want but we don't change the prevo point. So we just place this up on the train mesh here. So now the box collision is the necessary point and we can move around the train. Great. And now we place another box collision right here and this will be the undock trigger. Just an example so it's much easier to do it like this. Let's place this just for example at the end of the train here. Let's say right here so then we can trigger the box collision and we will undock the carriages later. Of course we need a variable called carriages. Carriages is a train blueprint object reference as an array and we make this public. Then again let's go to the event graph and we need a few new functions here. So the first one will be the custom event and this will be activate carriages. So we will take out our carriages say for each loop then we check the array element if it's valid with a question mark connected then we take out the travel boolean here go from the array element and say set travel and we will set it to the travel boolean here as well we do this for the speed so take out the speed go from the array element and set the speed to the speed of the train so now we will set the status of the travel and the speed of the train to the carriages compile and save this the next part is we go to the event begin play so we will get the actor location as well we go from the spline and say get world location then we say vector minus vector like this we get the vector length and then we set the distance to the return value like this the reason for this is when we go back to our level here so we have our path or spline component and our train will follow the spline and we can place it however we want because it will calculate the distance between the train and the begin of the spline so it will not snap to the begin it will stay there and continue follow the spline and this will also work for the carriages so let's go back to the train here let's go to our handle here so our switch and we just go to the end and want to activate our carriages the last function that we use is the stop function. I optimize this as well. So as you can see, we have our custom event here. We get the speed, check at first, is it over zero? On true, we want to set the speed minus 0 0.1 and then continue every 0 0.5 seconds so that we can slowly come to zero at the speed. And on false, we set the travel boolean to false and set the volume of the train to zero. So in this way we have a better solution to get the train to stop very slowly and realistic. 
The last part is we want to undock our carriages, so let's go to the details of our box collision here. On component begin overlap. Then of course we cast to our third person character, take out our carriages for each loop again. Then again we check if it's valid with a question mark and if it's valid we just call the stop function like this. So this is just an example to show how it's done. Let's go to our move along function and replace the train mesh with our box collision here, very important. Compound save this. And now we go back to a level, go to the train, right click, create child blueprint class. Let's call this carriages underscore blueprint open this up and the good part is we just have to replace the train with the carriage so we select our train mesh I prepared already in carriage here as you can see link is in the description so we take this static mesh go to our carriage blueprint and just replace it so we have to make a few changes here as you can see so I skip the process the important thing is that you place the box collision here in front of the carriage again Let's go back to our level. I place the carriage blueprints right behind the train. The important thing is the position because it will keep the position over the whole right. And also I aligned everything with the train tracks. Also we have to select our train here, go to the details and we have to set the start path to our path here and the carriages to our carriage blueprints. The carriages as well, we have to set up the start path. When we now hit play and we will drive the train, you can see it works pretty good. The wheels are spinning off the carriages as well. So let's go back to the train here. And as you remembered, we have this box collision that undocks the carriages, like this one. And now the carriages will slowly come to stand. Great! I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you have any questions please let me know and yeah, goodbye.